Hi everyone, welcome to the uh, third of the retailing training. This one is entitled Building and Maintaining the Customer Base. Obviously, the idea is to get to customer base as soon as possible so that your retailing becomes efficient, less time consuming and very profitable. Okay, so the first thing to realise I think is to ask ourselves just exactly what we've got our hands on. I believe that clean easy retailing is, is a money making machine. Um, if you follow the simple steps that I'll go over in this short training, it'll pay you back any time that you've invested in the building of the customer base over and over again. We've still got customers today that have been buying from us nine years now, so uh, I can certainly say that they've well paid us back and the, the effort that was uh, given in getting them in the first place. Once you've done the work, it stays done. However, the machine will need maintaining from time to time, or obviously, it'll become less efficient. Starting out is a bit like wading through treacle, but you're still making money, because obviously as you're going out, you're dropping your catalogues or you're building your online customer bases, um, you are actually making money but nowhere near the kind of money that you will eventually make if you continue to follow these simple steps. So I think every result is a positive step along your journey. So if you're looking for customers, so the faster you'll find them, the better it is. Now everything's a possible a positive outcome in my book because if you'll find a buyer, <laughs> yeah, that's what we're looking for you'll find somebody that's looking at your catalogue and they may in time turn into buyers or you've got people who will give you the book straight back now that's great because that's actually saved you between 12 and 16 hours worth of work because you can obviously remove them straight away um, and then do something else with that book so the average takings based on a new round will be roughly a pound a book but one thing that you will need to realise is that that's an average. Now averages need to be worked out over a period of time to give any real true example. So you may not average a pound a book for your first drop or your first month, but eventually when you've dropped a few thousand books out, you'll work out that your average will be round about a, thousand, round about a pound a book. Initially you may start off as low as 50p, 75 pence a book, but that will rise once you're on customised to customer base to four, five, seven pounds plus per book. However, try initially not to try and focus too much on the new, on the value of the orders that you're getting. However, focus on the customers that you're finding because at the end of the day that's worth a lot more to you. So how do we start the machine up? So we try and pick a geographical area that will allow you to drop a minimum of 200 books or present 50 in three close separate areas. So you drop your books out over three drops consecutively. Week one, week two, and week three. And week over the three areas. Uh, obviously you're going to do this on a four week basis, but you'll need about three areas to begin with. The initial results will vary from area to area due to such factors as number of competing distributors. Don't worry yourself too much about this one because if there are other customers in the area they're probably just going to their customers anyway. Uh, you do occasionally get people who are trying to build a customer base as well and you might be competing with those. Although you'll still pick up customers it might be worth speaking to me um, or your upline to find out how to handle that situation. Also depends on the age of the residents. Um, social background and peer group. Everyone's a potential customer, however we have found that all areas are different based on these factors. No two areas will the same, there's only one way to find out and that's to actually drop the catalogues out and find out. What we do tend to find is uh, more posher, if for want of a better uh, expression, properties tend to produce less orders than uh, what I would call good council properties where you've got about 40 or 50 percent of the people that have bought them. Uh, you'll get more orders from that area 
uh, probably not as high orders of, as the other areas but it tends to be quicker and faster to go to these type of product properties so what can you expect on average and around all of us said or produce a pound a book that's 21 percent profit for every pack you collect now that's regardless is if they buy or not so if you're averaging a pound a book it doesn't matter whether they're buying or not you're making 21 pence averaged out over the uh, books that you drop in so that you actually even pay 21 pence to walk up and down every path and that's a hell of a lot more than the postman gets paid I wish he gets wishes he gets paid 21 pence for every path he walks down certain areas will produce lower customer numbers and higher order numbers as we've said some will produce higher customer orders and less orders some will be fantastic and believe it or not some will be absolutely terrible now this will happen we've all had them I remember me and Tina dropping out 300 catalogues over a, a bank holiday weekend many years ago and picking up four pound so yes we've all had it we've all dealt with it the thing to do is to realize it's all part of the process of building your customer base and thankfully you don't own a shop and you're not stuck with that area so you can move you're not a tree you can just move to another area now the magic really is in the mundane you drop your area three times to four times we say about three times leaving around four to five weeks between drops now this is your drop cycle we recommend you do it you leave four weeks because then you do everybody in one pay cycle after every drop you remove houses that you do not get a book back from straight away after three drops and now it says four there but after three drops remove all of the people who are not buyers or not looking and then after six to eight weeks you remove everybody but that's actually not buying at all um, I personally think that uh, the way to handle this is to remove them after three not five or six but this cus this particular training was done for various groups that run various systems but we sort of say keep it to three drops so after three drops remove everybody that hasn't bought from you so you're just left with customers now the remaining people that you're left with have the potential but the potential to be uh, regular buyers which is a customer base creating what we call a super round so what we're saying is when you've removed all of the people that don't buy from you you've just got customers left so in that particular area let's say you're left with a hundred in, in your first area your hundred customers and then a week later you'll have area two will also be in the same position so let's presume there's a hundred customers on that or whatever there is there might be 50 or 20 or 30 it's irrelevant but what you simply do then is add these two areas together so what you did do in let's say week one or week two you actually do all in week one so that will obviously be uh, made up of those two areas now whatever your pound per book rate is that you're actually getting you'll find now that your pound per book rate will obviously increase because you're only dropping books to customers that have bought from you the average order will be higher than it was before it just makes sense so in this area we'll now have your super round and your old round three because obviously you were dropping in three areas you'll now have a spare week because you've merged two together so you can start another area with that time that you've saved now over a two week period your takings have increased in this example by 200 pound so let's say the two areas that you've merged together are now doing 400 pound you drop out another 200 catalogues in a new area because you've made a spare week and then that does 200 pound so obviously if you add those two together you've got 600 pound which means your actual 
um, total sales have increased by £200. Now that will work out regardless of what you're taking. We've just put numbers in there so it actually makes more sense. So you run these rounds for another three periods. Four to six sum groups use, we say another three periods. And then at the end of this period, remove all the non buyers again from your new round. You call your existing super round, which was the original one that you created by putting the two together, to the people who have at least bought once in that three week period. So you're thinning it down even more. Uh, and then you, what you're going to do then is merge that round with your new round that you've created in the spare week that you had. So you just adding buyers all the time to these areas and then condensing them down and adding buyers until you eventually got each round up until the amount that you want it to be. It's a bit like uh, squeezing fresh orange juice. Um, you're just looking to concentrate it, concentrating it and get it as pure as you possibly can. Then you just continue the process. If you follow this simple system over a period of time you'll develop a high producing retail business. All you'll be left with is regular customers. You'll hardly lose any books at all because of, you've obviously got rid of everybody that you lose books to. And you'll also build confidence to teach others to do exactly the same that you've done. It doesn't need complicating, it's really easy and really simple to do. What we have found is that talking to people outside of our team there are many many people out there that just spend months and months and months delivering catalogues to people who have bought once or twice and never buy again why do that it's a total waste of time you're in control you made the rules up so it's a matter of just using this simple three system if they don't buy in three you remove them and add them with some more people carry on this eventually then what you actually end up with is rounds that will practically order every customer will, will practically order every week you go but that's in the future but you can set any rules that you want to on these rounds you could even put in a minimum spend of say £10 so you could eventually <coughs> you could start removing people that don't spend £10 <coughs> then if you did that long enough you'd eventually end up with rounds with everybody that spent more than £3. You also need to be removing people where you're spending time unnecessarily going back to deliver products. So if you're having trouble getting products out, why bother? OK, the order might be OK, but if uh, you're going back three or four times to get the money back off these people and they're not playing ball with you, just take them off. There are plenty more people out there that you can just replace them with that will fit your criteria. So I'll leave you with this thought. <clears throat> Remember, you're not a mobile library. You're not going to be delivering catalogues all the while just to people that look in the hope that they will eventually one day buy. You're a business. A customer in our opinion is someone who buys on average every three to four weeks don't kid yourself we say three weeks uh, so if they don't buy sorry months so if they don't buy at least once every three months they're really not worth your time because there are plenty of other people out there that will so it's your business it's your income and it's your choice. Clean Easy is a fantastic business. However, what I have learned is it can be a very expensive hobby. So the thing is, is to make it profitable. So following these simple rules and building cost-effective customer bases, you'll make that profitable. That'll be a profitable part of your business. Also, always remember to not spend all of the income that you get from your retail. I would recommend that you reinvest part of that income into building your business. Now, I think the best way you can do that is to build a team. Uh, certainly, att attending training events 
uh, seminars, workshops and the like to learn exactly how to uh, build your business. You don't have to do it, it's totally up to you. However I will leave you with one thought. There is not one single earner in Clean Easy that I know of that earns £500 plus a month that has done so without attending trainings and workshops. Nobody's ever stood up at a training or sent an email out saying, well I never attended anything, I joined, dropped my books out, sponsored loads of people, they all earned a load of money and I went gold and ended up living, going on a free holiday. It just doesn't happen. So if you're really serious about this and you really do need to build a big in income from it, then you need to make certain that you've got some money to attend some of these meetings and events and make time to do it. Because that really is the only way that you're going to do it. Okay? So I hope that's helpful. If it's not and you need anything, any other advice, then just get back to me.